We recently went through a weather event where our home electricity was disrupted for 36 hours continuous. And during that time, I was assessing what to do for backup power. Um, and as an EV owner, obviously that's, and an EV enthusiast, that's where my thoughts gravitated towards. And I am familiar with multiple different products, but I don't know anyone who put together a assessment of all the different options that are available to EV owners to use uh, their cars as backup power during weather events. So I thought I'd go over that in a quick video. This is not going to take very long at all. So to start off, back in the olden days, and when I say olden days, really we're still in the olden days to some extent, but I lived in Florida for a decade, and about twice a year, hurricanes came through and knocked out the power, and I had a little Briggs & Stratton uh, Craftsman branded gas generator where I could run an extension cord from and keep a window-mounted air conditioner unit as a emergency backup. We could keep our refrigerator running and make coffee in the morning, things like that. So a standalone gas generator is a pretty common solution for people who have frequent outages. And that was my choice uh, when I lived in Florida. The problem is that it's very noisy. The noise of the uh, generator running is um, very disruptive to people who are neighbors. Also, it emits carbon monoxide in order to um, vent the gas engine. So you can't keep it in your garage or in your house. It has to be outside in the backyard somewhere and typically protected from weather. So it's not uncommon for people to put them in like a porch that has an overhang, which can be a bit of an issue with the carbon monoxide if there's any windows open. So there's there's definitely some concerns about that. Another option is uh, the more expensive Mercedes solution. And when I say Mercedes, I don't mean made by Mercedes, but a uh, higher class option, which is the natural gas generators. Typically, the most common one is uh, Generac. And you'll see them sometimes on the side of houses. They're fed from natural gas. So they don't need an electrical feed in order to get them started. And there's a transfer switch. So should the electricity stop, they automatically kick in. And this is a very uh, common solution for people who want to do a whole home generator backup. <clears throat> New, uh, newer options. Uh, solar with stationary battery storage is catching on pretty quickly. So you always have some batteries getting replenished from solar. You could also hook the stationary batteries up to just normal grid connections and have them power up and that way your house can run similarly to the Generac uh, with a transfer switch should the utility power be disrupted. Another newer option, and these are really just starting in the past couple of years, is non-stationary storage with electric cars because the battery in an electric car is much larger than the stationary storage batteries by a magnitude of about 10 typically. So it just makes sense if you have that large battery available, why not use it in order to provide backup power for your home? Okay, so the vendors that um, are putting out options um, I listed here, Tesla recently uh, expanded their product offering and they weren't for a while and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Hyundai Group has a vehicle to load option. Volkswagen has put out a press release. They haven't really put out any products. It's just a press release right now, and I really wouldn't hang my head on much from Volkswagen. Rivian has uh, both vehicle to load and vehicle to home, and I explained what these two are up here, um, so feel free to read through that. Ford has uh, vehicle to load, vehicle to home, and they just did a press release today concerning, uh, I think it's uh, power... Plus or Power Premium, something uh, where they're going to pay for a 100 amp charger for anyone who buys an electric vehicle from Ford, as well as the installation cost, anything within 80 feet. Tom Lockton just dropped a video concerning that press release, which I'll link down below in the description. General Motors also similarly has vehicle to load and vehicle to home, which we'll go over here in just a second. First, let's start with Tesla. And it came with the Tesla Cybertruck. Um, release 
because prior to that, Teslas didn't really have any option. And I, it is speculated the reason they didn't is because Tesla also had power walls as products, which they were concerned. It's speculated. We don't know this for sure. It is speculated that that was, uh, if we made it easy for EV owners that were Tesla owners to use their cars as whole home backup, that they would eat into the sale of Tesla Powerballs. And so there was a strategic decision to not make that product available. But with a cyber truck, because it's designed for people doing uh, work, they needed to have outlets. And after which there's really no stopping people from using it to uh, back up their home as well. So they expanded that to include something called PowerShare. So with Power on the Go, you have uh, two 120 volt um, outlets up to 20 amps and an additional 120 in the cabin. Uh, so two in the bed, two in the cabin, and then uh, one 240 volt up to 40 amps in the cargo bed as well for a total supply of 9.6 kilowatts, which is pretty significant. You could basically power everything you need to in a house just off the outlets in the cyber truck without any of the other integration. So those are just outlets. You just run extension cords and you could basically run everything you need to in your house. Or you could integrate it with the vehicle to home solution that Tesla has now uh, provided with their um, charger, where you could integrate it into an entire system in the house. That's the more expensive option. The Hyundai Group, and this includes all EGMP cars and legacy EVs, is this little adapter that plugs into the J1772 plug. And you basically run an extension cord. I've seen videos from YouTubers where they're seeing what they can power in their kitchen and they could basically run their entire kitchen off this thing. You just run an extension cord out and you break it out with a surge protector to get additional outlets and you could run a microwave, you could run a coffee maker, a refrigerator and you get a 1.65 kilowatts according to my math because it provides 15 amps on 110 volts. So if you do the math on that, that's about 1.65 kilowatts. Volkswagen has a very snazzy press release <laughs> with this product uh, image. It's a infograph that shows solar and a, some blue dotted line is going through some, I don't know, some random thing that looks like a refrigerator here. And we've got a um, car charger and a Volkswagen ID4 or an ID3, something in the garage. But they don't really have any products. They're doing what they call a pilot in, in Sweden. We don't really know the details around that. It Basically, when you read the press release, it sounds like there's just a EV enthusiast who's jailbroke an ID car in order to um, patch some things together to work. And then I, uh, Volkswagen showed up and said, sure, it sounds good to us. Um, but they say it's uh, using the bi-directional CCS 1511-8-2 um, standard in order to accomplish what they're doing. And likely their cars were already compatible with that and the person just kind of jailbroke it or something. I don't really know, but there's there's been no products and, and or additional information after this press release. So I would definitely take this with a grain of salt. Rivian, though, has been making significant progress. You can see here in this picture, these are the outlets that are available. The 12 volt are like the cigarette lighter round outlets, the USB-C, and then they have 120 volt, which are the normal uh, NEMA plugs. Um, so around a Rivian, you have multiple different options for vehicle load. And you could, similar to the Cybertruck, just run extension cords directly from a Rivian uh, to whatever you needed to. Uh, so that comes native with the car. Additionally, just recently they uh, released this home charger, which is a bi-directional charger offering uh, I think it's uh, 24 kilowatts, a very high number of kilowatts uh, that you're able to do bi-directional uh, charging with off this Rivian branded charger. At least that's what their claim is. I don't think this is out in the wild yet, but very soon we should be able to have a vehicle to home integration with this bi-directional charger provided by Rivian. Ford has been... Uh, coming out of the gate with a very mature product suite. On the bed of the Ford F-150 Lightning is this bank of outlets uh, that are designed to help worksite uh, power for tools. When you show up to a worksite, typically you'll have a generator that you need to run your tools from, and they could circumvent that by having all those outlets available in the bed of the truck, which makes it a very attractive sales um, feature. 
for people using the Ford F-150 Lightning as a work truck. Uh, that way you could save on the generator and you don't have to worry about the gas for the generator and all that thing, the weight of the generator. Um, you just have all your outlets right here in the bed of, uh, bed of the truck. But these can also be used to, similar to all the other ones, power your home. You just take extension cords and you uh, connect them to a refrigerator and a microwave and a coffee machine and an air conditioner. And uh, you can run your house for multiple days uh, with the size of the um, battery in the F-150 Lightning. Or you can do an expensive solution. Tom Malagny had this done at his house, where it's integrated into a whole home backup with an automatic transfer switch, and the power comes from the Ford F-150 Lightning. So uh, there is a bit of an issue, like if you take the Ford F-150 Lightning out, you basically lose the battery. And so we'll see here in a second, General Motors has solved that problem to some extent by putting a small battery in line as well. General Motors down here has this uh, inlet bar, or I'm sorry, outlet bar, which connects to the J7072 connector on Altium cars that are not trucks. I suppose you could connect this to a truck, but those have something different. And then it provides um, three kilowatts um, to do with as you wish. You can see there's four outlets here, so I'm assuming it's uh, two phase, but it might be one phase, I'm not sure, but still three kilowatts is uh, more than enough to run everything you would need in order to uh, survive an incident like we just went through here with the 36 hours without power. We could keep our refrigerator and our garage freezer running. We could have our window mounted air conditioner and all those things um, available to us. However, if you have a GMC Sierra EV or a Chevy, Chevrolet Silverado EV, you have all these outlets in the bed and also in the cab. Uh, for a total of 7.2 kilowatts natively just driving around inside the vehicle. Uh, you also have something called a accessory power bar that connects very similar to this um, that can add an additional um, 11 outlets um, for a total of 10.2 kilowatts of energy available with the 200 kilowatt hour battery on the Silverado or the GMC Sierra EV. So very significant amount of power available. So with the time that I had in the darkness of a house that didn't have electricity, I was piecing this all together and I thought I'd bring this uh, to people to consider that if you're looking at an EV, it has the ability to replace any kind of whole home backup that you might want to use in a variety of different forms. The General Motors option down here is an inexpensive option. It's only $300. I'm sorry, it's about $350. And it could work on just about any Altium uh, branded uh, electric vehicle. And it's very simple. You just plug it into the J7072 outlet on the car, and then you have four outlets. If you have one of the trucks, similarly, you have all the outlets already in there and you don't need this. However, if you want more, you can get 11 more outlets by getting a, a accessory power bar. Additionally, if you don't have any of those options and you have an electric vehicle, there's still things you can do. And this is actually what we ended up doing during our power outage because we didn't have any, any of those whatsoever. You can car camp in the garage because there's no emissions from a tailpipe. You're not concerned about poisoning yourself with um, the internal combustion engine putting out exhaust. So um, I've got car camping down to about a science and I actually have a whole YouTube channel dedicated to car camping in an EV. Feel free to go over there and check it out. I'll link it down below in the description. And I can be very comfortable in an electric vehicle sleeping. I've got it um, down where I've got plenty of space to lay down with pillows. Uh, the environments run while I'm sleeping. So if it's uh, cold, I have heat. And if it's hot, I have air conditioning. Additionally, there's typically convenience outlets in electric vehicles. Uh, there's not enough power going through those to like run an air conditioner or, or a coffee maker, but you can power a laptop just fine. And uh, there's also 12 volt inverters that you plug into the cigarette lighter, uh, the 12 volt um, plugs, and then you can charge things from there. However, typically those are unnecessary because most EVs nowadays come with built in USB charging ports. Uh, so if you need to charge your phone because there's been no power in the house for a day and your phone is running out of juice, you can go to your garage or driveway and plug it into your electric vehicle and solve the problem. There's also the 
vehicle to load wall chargers, which are not really a product yet, but we're hearing that Enphase and Wallbox are both coming out with solutions where you'll be able to plug a bi-directional electric vehicle into one of their wall chargers and uh, provide a vehicle to home integration. So all those are additional features that are available with electric vehicles for backup power. These are the websites that I referred to for this information. I'll link them down below in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.